Hey, how's it going, everybody? Sarasota Tim, coming to you from the Crusher. I am heading to Cedar City uh, with Miss T. We're going to do our laundry. We've got some stuff to do today. And uh, I wanted to say happy 4th of July to everybody. Uh, we were talking about some things this morning, and I said, I got I to gotta talk about that in a video because it's really interesting. And I know that my demographics, you know, that are my age, I uh, can remember, but it's it's fourth of july and we know what it means i mean nobody has to explain it to you it's the birthday of the united states in 1776 they signed the uh, uh declaration making it the united states and so i subtracted 1776 from night from 2024 we're 248 years old yesterday we were celebrating the bicentennial and forever we've been kind of saying we're 200 years old we're almost 250 years old now this is how fast time is flying i told tammy i said you know when we were younger time you know went slower i said you know why she goes yeah because we uh we wanted it to go faster we wanted to be older we wanted to do stuff and that's true but also so many things you know 40 years ago were the same you know like when you bought a car other than a different color every year they still had the slider for the air conditioner and the push button radio and it wasn't in, until technology took over and things were you know advancing you know by the month every six months now everything is obsolete and all these inventions started happening in technology so time seems to be just flying but we, we spent so many years with things staying the same, you know, with phone lines, with cords on them, you know, on TVs, we had to get up and change a channel manually, or we had the clicker that had three channels. I mean, very few advances for a long time. And now we just have, I mean, what you got today is obsolete tomorrow. It's crazy. I mean, you go in, think about it, overnight, you went from, um, having someone wait on you at McDonald's to now there's no one to even wait on you unless you insist on it. It's all push the button and at Walmart and Publix and other grocery stores, you self check out. They don't want to hire anybody. Everything's becoming automated. And pretty soon, you know, with them not wanting to pay everybody a fair wage, uh, it's going to be all on you. And speaking of that, I'm going to jump around a little bit in this video. We were talking on the golf course yesterday about prices, and they don't have any problem telling you that their cost is more. So milk and bread and, you know, gas and car prices, everything has gone up. Like, they say 20%. I say it's more like 35%. Things are really a lot more expensive. I mean, camping used to be $20, $30 a night. They want fifty to seventy dollars a night, depending on where you go. Uh, hotels are crazy prices. All these things. So they they say, look, all of these things have to cost you more money now. Every word, every which way you turn, your food, you know, things you got to do, you got to eat, right? But we're not going to give you any more money. We don't recognize the fact that all of your paycheck now is is more than gone you only you're already only had a little bit left after your bills uh, maybe a lot of us made mistakes and put ourselves in debt we didn't need to be in with uh, credit cards and, and cars that we didn't need and high car payments and things then they raised the auto insurance i mean my auto insurance went way up and i've been cheap for years i've never had a ticket in my life and geico now is charging me a lot of money so people got raised on their uh, car insurance and they were already paying a lot but what happens to the employers where do they ever step in and say hey you're barely making it I mean all of these things now for two years this inflation it's been like two years now that things have been going up and the cost of houses and people can't even qualify for a loan but we're not going to give you any more money so everybody's still working with that little paycheck think how much more you're drawing down your money out of your bank every month to exist I'm not talking to the rich people. I'm not talking to people that can't spend what they got in 10 lifetimes. 
No. And they're complaining too, believe it or not. <laughs> but it really is a, a sad shame. And that's going to that's gonna make me say something that I don't normally say on my channel. And it's, it's touching on politics, but I'm not going to get specific. I'm just going to say that, you know, right now um, we're thinking about buying a house. And we've all, I've always, not her, I've always, you know, been a renter. Uh, I moved around my business. I didn't care. It wasn't a big thing to me. Uh, but now I'm thinking, all right, we're a little older. We should probably get something that we can stay at for the rest of our lives, seeing how we only got eight years left. <laughs> but I mean, really, when you got a lot less runway in front of you and the way things are going and you're at the mercy of these landlords and stuff, it's really, but you know what? All those years that it was much smarter to own than to rent because you were paying yourself back and it was cheaper actually, now it's reversed. It's actually cheaper in most situations to rent than to own. So we've decided that we are going to keep our money until something happens. And this is what I want to talk about regarding politics. Folks, the election's coming up. And while a lot of people will sit here and tell you, and probably in my comments, that they've enjoyed a lot of growth in their wealth. You know, the 401, their stock market, the equity in their homes and all that. There's still a lot of people that are what I said earlier. They don't have all of that. They're the working class and things cost them more money and they're raising their children. They're trying to buy their, their first home and things are unattainable. So if things don't change by this time next year, so we, we want to find a place to rent and lease something for a year. First of all, in Florida, if you rent in the summer, you get a better deal. In the winter time, everybody goes there and you know there's a lot more people looking for the same thing. So you always wanna try and rent in the summer when people go back up north. And then when your lease is up, you can, if you're gonna move, you got a, an opportunity, you know, May, June, July, August, to find something else before this, the great weather comes in the winter time where everybody wants to be is South Florida. So we're, we'll go back and we'll rent and we're, gonna, we're hoping, and I'm, I'm gonna say it right now, if things aren't any different this time next year and with it being an election year, this is the only reason I'm speaking politics is because this is an election year and things are higher than they've ever been in our lives. We went through a pandemic and all of this stuff has transpired. We're in a new world and we're older. We're 248 years old now, the country. And we got less runway in front of us than we got behind us. So we want to live our life. So what kind of life is it going to be? Are, they going to, are there going to be an opportunity? Are things going to come down for people and for seniors and people on limited incomes and, and whatever? What's going to happen? So if things are the same as they are right now, this time next year, folks, I'm not a negative person by any shakes. And I know that God will see me through. But I, I, I think that's gonna, that would be terrible. I don't see how it could be. I think something has to break. I know people say there's gonna be a stock market crash, the housing's gonna crash. I don't care about a crash. I care about a correction. I care about either making mortgages 100 years long or something. I don't know what they gotta do. But they gotta make a housing affordable and cost affordable for food, fuel, utilities, insurances. Think about buying a place in, in Florida. If you don't live in Florida, you don't know. You have like one or two insurance companies only to buy your homeowner's insurance. And of course you have to have it if you have a mortgage, like a car. If you're financing your car, you must have full coverage. And it's expensive as heck. I mean, it's ridiculous. And who has all this extra money? Where does it keep coming from? Is it just gonna be dropping out of the sky? has nothing to do about planning and saving and all that all your life. There's people that did all that. Their money's running out. They've been, they've been living on credit cards. So I believe 
that something has to change. Whether the administration changes or doesn't, the people need to speak and, you know, the country won't really fail because if the, if the United States fails, think about it, the whole world would fail. So that's never going to happen. You're never going to see chaos where we're living like these countries that you see on TV possibly, where they're living in rubble and, you know, third world. That will never, they'll just keep printing the money, I guess, to keep things alive. There's no way people in our country are going, you've seen what it looked like. Wait till you see the videos we're going to bring you in the next week. People living in California, these big fine homes. There's plenty of money here. It's just that it has to be shared or not shared. I'm not saying that. It has to be something done so that the people that work, the people that serve you, the people that are trying to make their first run can make it. I mean, we got grandchildren. Uh, I mean, unless they just inherit millions of dollars, I mean, they have to, you know, find a way to, uh, to get through this world too. And just think, young people today that are growing up, if you've got children that are in school still, they don't even remember back in the days. What I, what I started out saying in the beginning of this uh, video, you know, 248 years ago, we started as a country. And yesterday in 1976, wasn't that the bicentennial? Seven, uh, yes. 1976, we were celebrating only 200 years old. That was my class. Uh, 76, 77 is when I graduated. And I, I often look back at how our country was and how it was as me, how it was for me, you know, growing up, how much things cost, what, what it was like with my friends. We rode around on 10 speeds. I mean, bicycles didn't even change. There were 10 speeds or a regular bike. And uh, life was simpler. Nobody had a way of calling you if you weren't at home. Your phone, and then answer machines came about. The only way people could reach you is either drive over and see if you were there, ride their bike over to you, meet you at a place that you might be hanging out, or give you a call at your home on your landline. Now, you can't hide from anybody. And if anything happens, you can just post it. And it's on the World Wide Web seconds later. I mean, while it's phenomenal and interesting, it's it's not been that good. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of, I won't go into the negatives, but you can just use your own imagination. Uh, so I'm, I'm like 65, I'm a boomer, okay? I'm a geezer now. I'm one of these people that like, oh, back in my day. <clears throat> and I see what people that were saying that when I was younger, you know, uh, how things were different. So, I don't know where I'm going with that. I'm just saying that it's the 4th of July. The country is only, I mean, get this, we're like a young nation. <laughs> These other countries around the uh, the globe are thousands, right, of years old. They're much older than us. And, and look how we've progressed so fast and to be number one. And... Uh, so just get out there today, and when you enjoy your hot dog and your hamburger, uh, try to re remember that it's the 248th birthday, but think about those early birthdays and how life was and how you were and how you have had to evolve too uh, with the, uh, the changing times. We all have, but we can also bring back. We can take our country back. We can change things. We can... We can always still be kind and, and spread the word. And where people have tried to remove a lot of that from our country, I don't remember all that stuff. Don't remember God. Don't remember the way things were. Don't remember when things were fairer. Uh, no, let's, let's move away from that. So there's a lot of evil out there trying to you know, remove those memories. They do it to our kids in school. And if you think I'm lying, you're wrong. There, there's a... There's an evil force out there that's got a means to an end. And they don't even care if they're not even going to be around when it all comes to fruition, their dirty plan. They're leaving it for their family. They want the dirty plans for them. So let's not let it happen, folks. Let's reunite. Let's America uh, be Americans. 
when you wave your flag today and you're celebrating with those fireworks, remember, this is your country. You're an American. I don't care what color you are, you're an American. And what does America stand for? What did the Constitution stand for? What are we? Are we just going to be idly side, stand by and say, well, I got mine. I don't worry. What am I going to do? I'm one voice. I'll tell you what, if everybody said that, we'd be in a world of hurt. In fact, too many people are saying that. So let's reunite. Let's get back together and crush it.